Hello and welcome to the SBL Guru podcast. My name is Marty Windle. So we're going to focus today on something that's in the syllabus and people have got often a bit of confusion about it. It comes under section E of the SBL syllabus. Section E, as you probably know, is technology and data analytics. And they've got under E1, cloud, mobile, and smart technology. Now, most people in the exam, they know what cloud is. They've got an understanding of cloud. They've got an understanding of mobile, but people are a little bit confused as to what is meant by smart technology. So let's start off with a basic understanding as to what smart technology is. Smart technology refers to a system of sensors or devices and analytics that can independently gather data. Number one, they gather data. Number two is they learn patterns. And number three, the data they provide leads to actions that can be taken. Now, the big advantage of using these sensors is that you can make decisions in real time. So you can address problems very, very quickly. Now, if we look at smart technology, you may be using smart technology yourself inside your home right now. Examples of smart technology might include the smart doorbell. I've got one in my house. And yes, I installed it myself. I was very, very proud to do so. So you can see who's at the door. Somebody rings the doorbell. You can look at who it, who it is and decide whether or not you want to answer the door. You may have a smart watch. The smart watch, which I've got, tells me you've been sitting down for too long. Please stand up, wave your arms around and walk around the room. So this helps me to make sure that I'm not sitting in one place for too long. Maybe helps to improve my health. And people have smart thermostats, which can learn their patterns of heating and cooling preferences. Now, back in the old days, my father did not really approve of these smart technologies. In our house in Yorkshire, my father always turned the heating on. The central heating came on on the 16th of December, regardless of any other temperatures. So it could be snowing outside, but if it wasn't the 16th of December, he would not turn on the central heating. That's what happens when your father is from Yorkshire. But nowadays we've got smart technology, which can help to understand your heating and cooling preferences and adjust it based on what suits you as an individual. But what about the business applications of smart technology? How can companies use smart technology to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the operation? When you're in the SBL exam, quite often the question is going to be about using technology in a business. How can businesses use these smart technology devices? Well, the first example we've got is in terms of inventory management. Companies like Amazon and Walmart, what they do is they use smart sensors to closely monitor the stock levels in their store. This allows them to automatically order and resupply whenever items are low. It can mean that the shelves are never empty and they're always responding to the demand of the customers and reducing overstocking in the organization. If we look at it from a manufacturing perspective, there's also an application in manufacturing. Big manufacturers like Caterpillar and Bosch, what they do is they use sensors on their machinery and it allows them to schedule repairs and maintain the equipment before that equipment breaks down. This can provide an early warning signal that there's going to be a problem with the machine in the future. This can help to minimize any downtime in the factory and avoid costly delays. Many organizations now are using these smart devices for customer service. We see this at the airport where there's increasing use of facial recognition and biometric data in your passport. What it allows airports to do is clear people through customs very, very quickly using facial recognition. This can help to minimize any downtime in the factory and avoid costly delays. Many organizations now are using these smart devices for customer service. We see this at the airport where there's increasing use of facial recognition and biometric data in your passport. What it allows airports to do is clear people through customs very, very quickly using facial recognition. Smart technology is also being used by delivery companies. 
They can see any time where their vehicles are, but also take into account local traffic conditions and respond to the changing conditions where their vehicles are driving. This can allow them to minimize their environmental footprint by reducing the amount of petrol they use, but also can help to minimize delays in delivery to the customers. If we look at how these are going to be used in factories, there's also something called fatigue detection. Cameras can monitor the eye level of the workers and where the workers are getting tired, where their heads are dropping. It can set off an alarm which says you need to take a break, you need to take a rest. This is a massive improvement in safety within the factory. You can also see it now in cars. I was recently driving a car a Subaru Forester when I was in the UK. If my head bent down for a minute, I would get a warning on the car. So this is all about health and safety issues. They're actively taking into account health and safety when they are producing these devices. So think about the application for truck drivers who are doing lots and lots of driving every day. It can have a major impact in reducing the number of accidents. We can also use smart devices like drones to monitor areas which are very risky for a human to be involved in, such as in offshore oil rigs, contaminated sites or disaster zones. So it's a way of getting in to look at an area without humans getting involved. Major improvement in health and safety. Now, in the SBL syllabus, they also talk about risks, and in particular, the risks of using smart technology. So you must be aware of some of these risks because they might ask you about the risks of smart technology in the exam. First issue you can talk about is privacy risks. These smart devices, they collect enormous amounts of data, and some of that is your own personal data. You may be unhappy that that is being shared with the company. Also, these companies may be vulnerable to cyber attacks, and your data may be stolen if it's not properly secured and encrypted. There are also potential ethical issues. When we use a smart device or smart sensors, we may be replacing the job of an individual. It could cause people to lose their job and be made redundant. There are also ethical concerns in terms of these devices being used for increased surveillance of the population. And this is something that like Big Brother is watching you. There's concerns that they're becoming authoritarian monitoring of what people are doing. The other concern is these algorithms being used may in themselves be subject to some bias and may be flawed. So that's something you've got to consider when you're using this type of technology. So when you're in the exam, possible questions you might get asked are, how can smart technology be used in organizations? You've got lots of examples to give now, but also what are the ethical concerns and the risks in using this smart technology? Wishing you the best of luck in your examination. If you want to do one of my courses, either my long course, which is tuition and revision, a revision course, or just a mock exam course, please get in touch with me. I'm here to help you and support you to get through that SBL exam.